Hi, I'm Will from Tested. Today I'm here to talk about the Fitbit Zip. It's this little guy right here. It's a $60 activity tracker, and it's the both the simplest one that I've looked at and one of the less expensive ways to get into tracking your day-to-day -day activity. I've been using it for about the last five and a half months, and it's, it's really straightforward. All there is in here is a battery, an accelerometer, uh, an LCD screen, and then the front is a touch screen. It's, it's not the kind of like on your phone, but you just tap it and it changes to one of four or five different screens. So the zip works all the time. Uh, I put it in my jeans watch pocket, which means that it's easy to keep. You don't lose it very often. Uh, and you, you walk everywhere wearing jeans, uh, but it doesn't include the more fancy features that are found in the higher end Fitbits and some of the other sleep and activity monitors. Uh, you know, even like the original Fitbit, which I reviewed two years ago. Uh, it, it, this is just a pedometer. It's just for measuring how many steps you take each day. And then the software that uh, you pair with the device on your phone or on your PC or whatever uh, extrapolates out other information like the number of calories burned and, and all the kind of stuff you need to kind of quantify your life. So there are five things that actually display on the device itself. Uh, the number of steps you've taken, the distance you've walked, the number of calories you've burned, this smiley face, which kind of tells you how well you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Mine usually has its tongue sticking out, which I think is probably not real good. And then the last thing is a clock. Um, I leave this in my watch pocket all day long. I never actually look at it, but you know, the clock could be useful, I guess. So the device uses Bluetooth 4, which means it can sync with your phone directly without having to use a PC or anything like that in between. And it uses very little amount of power on a day-to-day -day basis. The CR2025 watch battery that's inside lasted about five and a half months of daily use. Uh, now, this doesn't say constantly in sync with your phone. You do have to occasionally launch the app. It'll connect to the, to the zip, download your data, and then upload it to Fitbit's service in the cloud. In reality, the Zip stores seven days worth of minute-to-minute -minute data, you know, what you're doing at any given time throughout the day, and then another 23 days worth of, here's the total distance walk, the number of steps taken, and the calories burned. So you do need to sync every seven days or so if you want the full data uploaded to the cloud. I frequently find myself forgetting to log into the Fitbit app on a seven day basis, but every 30 days is definitely doable and relatively easy to, to do. So how does this device convert the number of steps you've taken into the number of calories burned and the distance you've walked? Uh, well, Fitbit's app uses some proprietary mojo to kind of convert that stuff. It turns out that there's a basic relationship between your height and your weight and the number of steps you take and the kind of bounce of your gait that allows them to detect more or less how much you walk, how far you've walked, and how many calories you've burned on a daily basis. The app starts with a base number of calories burned for the day based on your specified activity level. I tell I sit at a desk all day uh, and then your age and weight. Uh, once you start at that base, it then goes up from there as you add activity. So when you walk, when you jog, when you run, when you ride your bike, when you go swimming, whatever it is you do, uh, whether you whether the Fitbit actually tracks it or not, you can input it into the app and get a good idea of how many calories you've burned. Uh, on the other side of it, it also the app also tracks food. So you can type in that you had a Wendy's hamburger for lunch and french fries and a Diet Coke, and it'll say, okay, that was about a million calories, and you're gonna need to do this much additional exercise today to burn that off. The upshot is that you can get a pretty close idea of calories in calories out as long as you're assiduous about tracking your food it's not going to be as good as a sensor that has heart rate information and tracking but it's in my experience pretty good when I track food religiously and track activity religiously then it would was pretty good at telling me whether I was going to get fatter or skinnier on a week-to-week -week basis there are a couple of things that I don't like about the zip. It's water resistant and splash proof and sweat proof, but it won't survive a trip through the wash and you shouldn't go swimming with it, obviously. Uh, it does include a little dongle that you can hook on your bra strap if you're a woman or on your belt if you're into that whole thing. Uh, I found it worked really well in the watch pocket of your jeans as long as you manage to remember to pull it out before you send them through the washing machine. Um, but at 60 bucks, it's not the end of the world should you run one of these guys through the washing machine. The requirement to, to sync every seven days or 30 days, depending on how much information you want, was a little bit of a hassle, but I found it to be not that big a deal actually in practice. And the battery life savings for, you know, five and a half months worth of battery on this little guy is great, especially if you never ever change your pants. Uh, the zip comes with a holder as well as this guy right here. It's a little Bluetooth dongle that works with the low power mode of the new zip. And, and that's it. I think it's quite good. For 60 bucks, it's a good way to get into quantifying your life. Um, it comes in five colors and you can get it on Amazon or all sorts of different places. Uh, that'll do it. I like this guy. For Tested, I'm Will. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.